Every time that he goes into an area, he's always uh, making enormously important contributions. Everything that he touches is like gold. He's curing cancer. He's <laughs> making new discoveries of technology. He's um, being a great mentor. It's not much more any one person could do, I would say. He is a superstar, and he should be perceived as a superstar. Some people start to coast in science. He ain't coasting. <laughs> no, he is not. <laughs> Well, I got interested in science, I think, really at a very early age because I read about fossils and dinosaurs and I thought that was really interesting. I wanted to be a paleontologist. And then I got a chemistry set and I was really excited because I loved, you know, all, all the chemicals and the colors and doing all the experiments and, and putting things together and seeing things happen. But it really whetted my appetite for chemistry. As a grad student, I ran into some technical problems that um, I was, began to get interested in developing techniques to solve the problems because I always figured, you know, that rather than just get to where you want to be, if you can develop something that makes it easier for everyone to do, you know, even though it's a little bit more work, you get something more interesting. So I always took that up as a challenge try to develop new ways of doing things. His technologies do more than inform his own scientific inventiveness. They actually provide a resource for the entire scientific community, and that is really a notable accomplishment. He's a gadget guy, and uh, some people are gadget scientists and sort of never get to biology, and he's definitely not that. He'll spend X months being an engineer, and then he'll spend X years being a biologist and using it to discover important things and sort of know what the important questions are to ask. The beauty of genetics is, is that you can ask a question about some part of biology that you don't really understand, and if you're clever about it, you can trick the cell into telling you the answer. When you duplicate a cell, it's like duplicating a small city. And to do that, you use lots of machines. Roads, you have things that destroy trash, they have uh, recycling. And importantly, you know, you have to make sure that you take care of the blueprints. Because the blueprints tell you how to build a city. And the blueprints for a cell are the DNA molecules. I think when we first figured out uh, that uh, the DNA damage response was regulated by signal transduction, by protein kinases, that was pretty special because we thought that was likely to be the kind of information transfer that would be employed and here it was. He wants to know how, what, where, when, and why for every little part of science. And that's really driven, I think, his creativity, his innovation, and his contributions. We always want to be able to try to get people who are exceptional, not only in terms of what they have done, but what it is that they would be able to accomplish when they come here. Creative, bold, ambitious, and, and um, and everyone likes him. He's a super good guy. Well, I mean, ambition is uh, is an interesting word because it implies that that you want to expand your career, sort of thing. And that's really not what drives me. I'm just interested in questions. It's really a privilege to be in a position where you're in a lab and you can think of things and you can run out and test them and try to see if you can understand something in a new way. And there's just no way to describe the sort of feeling of enlightenment when the right idea just clicks into place and just explains a lot of things that you've been wondering about, puzzling about for years. And that's a pretty good feeling. <laughs>